Ah, Paradox, what have you done? To say that the release of Leviathan, the latest installment into Europa Universalis 4's long-term DLC investment fund was anything other than an absolute disaster would be less believable than a YouTuber's apology video. Completely unbalanced game mechanics that totally break the game along with a slew of performance issues and bugs even causing the game to crash entirely. Let's just say that Leviathan deserves its overwhelmingly negative review score on Steam, earning its place in history as the lowest rated gamer expansion ever on Steam. But you know what Paradox are like, one minute they're the worst company ever and then all of a sudden they're pretty good again and then before you know it they're back to being mecha Hitler reborn. And to be reasonably fair to them, the vast majority of the issues that have come with Leviathan's release have been patched out, but it still got me thinking, has EU4 run its course? And no, it's not just this one shit show of a DLC launch that's caused me to consider this, it's a number of things. Most of those things being the sheer amount of dollars that I've spent on the game and all of its DLC so far. But it's also the release of Crusader Kings 3 and how it was more than just a glorified DLC expansion for its predecessor, actually overhauling mechanics and adding totally new ones of its own that could be the basis for a similar sequel for, perhaps, a Europa Universalis 5. It's been close to 8 years since EU4 was first released, and say what you want about the DLC keeping it alive, I don't find it right for us to have to pay $30 for an expansion to a game that's the better part of a decade old just to give it new content. Especially when the QA for it is like this. And if Paradox are really just keeping it on life support to suck more money from the figurative healthcare system that is our wallets, the question is, is it not time for us to flick the switch and let it die a dignified death. Firstly, let's talk longevity. At what point does EU4 find itself being outdated? One of the easiest ways a game can find itself at the very least appearing dated is through its visuals. Fortunately, for a strategy game like EU4, that's not usually something it needs to worry too much about. What's generally far more important for a strategy game than visual appeal is visual clarity. I've always found that Paradox Grand Strategy titles have done a sound job of being visually clear and have other features like the map mode to embellish this. I don't think that many people, myself included, are worried that EU4 looks like a dated game or needs a serious touch up in the visual department. On a technical level, the game's certainly not a shambles, save for the release of Leviathan, and it's not like it's in dire need of a new engine. The Clouswitz engine is pretty old, yeah, but it does what it needs to do. And mechanically, I certainly wouldn't call the game outdated, especially at this point in its lifetime, but there are certainly a few things it could do with a bit of a tinker, namely anything to do with forts. And lastly, in terms of longevity, I'd like to talk about exclusivity and competition in the market. Something that there's a severe lack of for a game like EU4. This is something that I've banged on about plenty of times in the past. One of the big reasons that Paradox can be the undisputed top dog of Renaissance and early modern history grand strategy is that there aren't really any direct competitors to the game. Nothing that does what EU4 does to the same level of detail and depth. I mean, there's the Total War series, but that's far more focused on real-time battle systems and is far less detailed in terms of provinces and the internal workings of a nation. And other than a handful of other titles with far less of a player base, what else is there really? And this exclusivity leans into why their DLC lineup is as it is, a not so subtle reminder to watch my slightly outdated video rant about that as well, link in description. And another reason that it might be time for EU4 to go. The pricing. The major argument in favour of keeping EU4 around is that all of the expansions for it are helping it stay fresh by adding new content. I mean, look at the base game of EU4. Could you imagine playing without things like being able to develop custom nations, estates, the league wars, the ability to upgrade ships, subject interactions? I could go on, but for brevity's sake, I'd better not. And despite its shambolic launch, I can appreciate that Paradox were genuinely trying to innovate with Leviathan and expand on the game. I really like the addition of tags in Colonial Australia and New Zealand, and while it's incredibly historically and culturally inaccurate for First Nations or Maori people to be building empires like Europeans, it's nice to have some life in that part of the map. But at full price, you're paying $30 a pop for these expansions. That's half the price of the base game, and there's 14 of them. At what point is it not only life support to keep the game going, but simply Paradox sucking our wallets dry in order for us to keep our games up to date? 
You can hardly say that it needs the content either. It's not like this is still an unfinished game begging for content to get it to a playable state. And that's not to mention the sheer number of mods for this game. There are several total overhauls that add a plethora of content. Admittedly, not at the hands of Paradox, but it's another avenue for the game to stay fresh for longtime players or for those seeking a new kind of challenge. But let's not pretend that these new expansions are going to get new people into the game. Because all it's really doing is adding another price tag on top of what you already have to pay to get the full EU4 experience. The cost of the base game of Europa Universalis 4 along with every expansion, not including any immersion packs, unit packs or music packs, is almost $400 Australian, the equivalent of about $300 USD. That's one way to gatekeep your game I guess. You might get another 10 or 20% off that total with a bundle deal, but that's still over $300 for the complete version of an 8 year old game. No matter how you want to paint it, when compared with the vast majority of the rest of the market, that's simply not reasonable. And people act as if DLC is the only way that a game can receive updates long into the future, which is simply not true. I don't think it's unreasonable to expect that a game studio provides support, patches and new content for a game several years after its release, because there are countless examples of games that have. I think that it's clear that Paradox's approach to the profitability of games like EU4 doesn't lie with total sales, but with maximizing the profit from each individual purchase. I mean, why make $400 selling the game to 6 different people, when you can make $400 from flogging DLC to one person? But because of their lack of a competitor, they can afford to charge people an exorbitant amount of money for new content, and apparently in the case of Leviathan, charge people 30 bucks to break their game. But perhaps a competitor shouldn't be coming from a different company, but from Paradox themselves. Perhaps what EU4 really needs is a sequel. Now, obviously I think it'd be in Paradox's best interest as a company if they had a sequel lined up for EU4 before officially discontinuing their development and expansions for it, but I do genuinely think that it's something that they should seriously consider doing. One of the biggest advantages of releasing a new sequel is that it has the potential to attract new players to get them into the genre, and for a genre with an audience as niche as grand strategy, you gotta take what you can get. Like I said, the U4 doesn't have a price tag that many would be willing to pay, especially if they're not 100% certain that they'd fall in love with it. Crusader Kings 3 was a great example of a sequel to a game like CK2 that's had a lot of work done on it over the years, and in this scenario you need to do two main things. One, innovate enough that you're not just basically playing the exact same game, and two, have enough content for it to be worthwhile playing for veterans, lest they just continue to play the predecessor. CK3 did both of these things, I believe, to an acceptable standard. It added its own mechanics and workings and changed around some of the existing ones while still maintaining the same feel, so that longtime players of the series were comfortable with it from the get-go. And look, it's not got the depth of CK2 with all of its expansions at the moment, but it does offer its own unique yet familiar experience and I don't feel compelled to play CK2 over it. This is the sort of thing that EU4 needs, dare I say an EU5. I'm not too fussed about them improving the visuals, though I gotta admit I really do like the look of CK3, but something that's as I said unique yet familiar and that has a much more attractive price tag for newcomers to the series. And we're not in 2013 anymore, we should expect that the majority of the now core gameplay features added in EU4's expansions should be part of the base game of a sequel, and it would be an opportunity for them to rework or build on the game's mechanics. The game has a distinct reliance on mana systems that I know many people aren't a huge fan of, and there are a swath of balances that could be added between religions and government types as well that would be far too long to list in a reasonable amount of time, but a sequel would give Paradox a chance for a new perspective and provide a new experience for longtime fans to dig into. And if your only issue with the sequel is the fact that you'd have to pay for the game again, but you own at least two or three of the expansions for EU4, not least if you own all 14 of them, then I really don't think that that's an argument that you can seriously consider. So what do you think? Do you think that it's time for EU4 to be put to the sword? I know a lot of you guys are filthy Paradox Grand Strategy Goblins like myself, and I'd really like to hear what you all think about it, so make sure to have some respectful discussions about it in the comments section below. And while you're at it, smack that like button, smack the subscribe button, and smack the goddamn bell too.
And look, when it comes to it, regardless of what I think the future of EU4 should be, it will always be one of my favourite games, even if it were left in the state that it's in. After all the issues from Leviathan's launch have been fixed of course, it's still a game that I'd be willing to jump back into and spend countless more hours desperately trying to conquer the world. But rather than leaving a legacy of miserable DLC launches, an insane price tag for new players and the feeling of a light wallet for their loyal fans, Perhaps it's time that Paradox seriously considered abdicating EU4 from its throne and allowing a worthy successor to rule in its place.